All right, guys, it is a toy to back with you guys live talking about something that just happened yesterday, at least publicly. And I'm with Bennett Prescott, who's actually from BNC Group, which has a major interaction with this uh, acquisition. Right. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with what we're talking about, Eminent Speaker Group, who is one of the last real manufacturers of speaker components in the United States, got bought out oh, by Misco too. BNC Group. I'm sorry. There's Misco too. They're pretty big. That's true. Misco as well. Okay. But most of us are, at least in DIY, are very familiar with Eminence. And you guys, as of yesterday, released that you guys have purchased Eminence Speaker Group. Is that correct? Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's something we've been working on for more than a year. I'm trying to remember the, the first time I was in Kentucky, but it was more than a year ago for sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, went from sort of a back and forth with the current owner, Rob, and, and the rest of the Galt family, uh, and our CEO, Lorenzo, um, and trying to see, you know, could this be a fit? Can these two cultures fit together? And, and could this be a good way to pass on that legacy? Um, and uh, obviously the result is that, that Galt decided that we, we could pass on that legacy and we were the right people to, to keep things going and to uh, look towards the future with the Eminence brand. And no, it is not Monday. It is Saturday. But this this dropped and it's so huge. And so many people have questions about this acquisition because here's the deal. Most people probably don't realize this, but BNC Group has been buying out uh, quite a few different companies recently. Um, as of late 2017, they bought out uh, Chiare and 18 Sound. And now you guys have bought out Eminence. And so the concern that a lot of people have, because we've seen this in home audio industry a lot, like Klipsch. Mm. The people who own Klipsch will buy out a company like Athena, and then it's gone, right? We never heard of Athena again. They completely liquidate them. They're off the market. So I think a lot of people are asking the question, what's going to happen with Eminence? Are they still going to be around? Are they going to be a company still? Uh, will you still manufacture drivers? Or is BNC just going to absorb it? Is the manufacturing in America going to happen? I mean, what are you know? those are the questions that we're interested with. Yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot to talk about there. The short story uh, that, you know, it, it's just a funny question for me. Uh, like, why would we buy Eminence and then not put more energy into them? Uh, mm. as, as a, you know, I, I run, uh, uh, I'm the director of, of BNC Speakers North America. So I uh, operate our, our facility in New Jersey and all customers in North America uh, are, are my customers. Um, mm. And uh, so, one of the things that is near and dear to my heart is American manufacturing. You know, the rest of the group manufactures in Italy, uh, and we don't uh, manufacture in in China or you know. There's lots of things you can do to go and try and just be the low cost leader. But there's lots of great reasons to manufacture close to your customers. We have a pretty big customer base here in North America. So one of the things that is a dream to me was was to be able to say, hey, we're manufacturing in North America. So if you're in Europe and you want to buy products, you buy them made in Europe. If you're in the U.S., you want to buy products, you can buy them made in the U.S. And this is uh, something that will eventually let us do that. There's a lot of work to be done between then now and then. But uh, absolutely, there's there's no way that we're going to buy a factory in Kentucky and then <laughs> not make it more of a factory. Uh, that's, mm. that's a major goal. I think also it's sort of unfair to compare the BNC speakers group to Klipsch or some other very capital backed brand where there's a parent company that's multi billions of dollars and owns brands sort of the way that you and I might own stocks. This is an investment and it trades them back and forth. You know, we're, we're experts and we're potentially the, the world's experts in transducers and, and going for performance and design. We have a huge investment in that it's so expensive to keep designing new transducers year after year and keep pushing the boundaries there. And we also do the manufacturing, which is sort of unique. There's some people who do the design, but not the manufacturing. We do it both and we feel that it's important to do both. And that's the same as, as Eminence, that they they do both the design and the manufacturing. And that's, that's really important to them. So that's why it's a good fit. But don't forget the whole group in terms of comparing us to Klipsch or some other company where there's a lot of uh, venture capital money, the whole group is, is just not that big. So we're not some juggernaut coming through the industry. We are a pro audio company that is invested heavily in the future success of the pro audio industry. And that's why we're doing this is because we want to have the pro audio industry in general be better. And this is, this is something we paid for out of our own pockets. 
uh, and uh, you know, with the support of the Italian government, certainly, and with the support of the Kentucky government, have been super beneficial and helpful um, trying to make this happen so that there's there's still a very successful series of brands ten years from now, and we want mm -hmm. we want them to grow. We want Eminence to grow. We want all of our brands to grow. And I think that you can look at our track record with 18 Sound and Chiari and see that yeah, we we so far have not managed to totally screw that so up. So one of the things, and, and I got AJC's asked like a million good questions. I'm going to get to those in a minute. But before I get to those, one of the things I want to point out too is Chiare. Um, before Chiare got bought out by BNC Group, that was in 2000, the end of 2017, right? The end yeah. of 2017, beginning. Okay. It's like December or something. Yeah, right, right at the very end. So when they got bought out, I had never heard of Chiare. Now, I'm not saying that they weren't a well known brand, it's just they weren't very well known in the United States. And now that you guys have bought them, it's what, I guess, really technically four years, four and a half years later or so, um, they're a staple. I mean, I, I've heard of Chiare quite a bit. You can buy their products right from Parts Express. Um, Jeff Schneider, who uh, is on the show, he's actually coming on Monday as well. He might talk some more about this oh, yeah. <laughs> on Sound Advice. But, um, you know, he has done a great job, I feel like, advertising the Chiare brand and showing off their quality one of the things i was really impressed with was this year uh chiare actually went to um parts express uh like speaker design competition and yeah. you guys had sponsored a build by keith etheridge which came out beautiful yeah it's a beautiful great show um and so anyway I i'm just saying that because for those that might be scared and myself included because i have a lot of friends that work at eminence and things of that nature you know it it's one of those times where it's it's neat because I I have seen what you guys are willing to put into the company back to make sure that it does not only live on but that it lives its best future life. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't need another BNC speakers, and people already struggle often enough trying to figure out well, what's the difference between eighteen sound and BNC speakers? Why do you need both brands? I think that eighteen sound has some very different technology and a very different mm -hmm. view, and they have their own design team. But uh, you know, I can see from the outside how it might not be quite as obvious. But my, my goal is I want to be able to offer something to every customer. And some people are making big ass line arrays with BNC and 18 sound parts, and that's great. And some people are making cars and home audio speakers with Chiari brands, and that's great. Uh, but there's people who want something that none of those three brands have and mm. would be happy to buy it from us. Would, you know, we, we do business in a very reliable, predictable way, and we're there for the long, long haul. I mean, we live in this industry. And so uh, there's a lot of benefits to doing business with a company that, that has long-term thinking like that. Um, and so now that Eminence is part of our group of brands, we can offer that same security to Eminence while keeping, you know, the brand's great. It, the products are great. The people are great. Uh, you know, I'm, I've talked to all those people recently. Uh, certainly, I emailed a lot of them yesterday to say congratulations, and we're finally through this, and I'm looking forward to the next step. Um, but Eminence is, as you know, Eminence is is going to keep going and become stronger because that's that's our goal. We we want that diversity in our brand lineup so that whatever you want to buy, if you're making a speaker, you can buy it from one of our brands and be very happy with it. Okay. Um, Notorious. RVH has a question at the end, but we're gonna, we're going to skip that. Let me ask some of the AJC's asked quite a few questions. I thought were pretty good. Um, uh, he asked if there's any antitrust issues that you know of. Um, no, but one of the, the we're, not, we're not big enough. <laughs> not big enough. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. So the other question is, and this one I found very interesting. So one of the things that I talked about Jeff was uh, with BNC. One of the reasons why I think BNC is such a major. Uh, influence in the pro audio world is that they have a really good job with repeatability in the manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. So as far as getting a driver that you know is going to work exactly the same as it did uh, with the one that went bad, you guys have a very good recognition of that happening. Now, I'm not saying eminence doesn't. All right. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am wondering is with, and what he has asked is, will they absorb the manufacturing know-how how, and utilize that in other drivers from BNC? So, like with that manufacturing that you guys have done, whatever it is that, that you do back there to to make sure that they manufacture so tight tolerances, is that going to move towards eminence as well? Yeah, I guess a lot of what makes the BNC products so reliable and repeatable is is sort of before our manufacturing step. It's qualifying really good suppliers because making paper parts, these speakers are metal. Okay, you can buy metal parts almost anywhere. 
a magnet. Right. That's a little harder to buy, but it's a, a magnet is a magnet. There's defined standards for it. But then the soft parts, the the paper and the cloth and the spiders and the treatment, that that stuff is all closer to witchcraft than than science and really hard to quality control. And we have put a huge investment in which suppliers we can trust. And we audit these guys. I mean, we're there all the time. Certainly less than the last couple of years because it's been hard to go to Asia. But, uh, you know, they, they have a manufacturing process that we audit regularly. And that's sort of the benefit that we can bring to eminence is uh, the, the buying power and the reliability of those suppliers so that when they need to buy a cone, we can we can all be buying cones from the same people and we all get treated the same. And they, they know that we're not going to accept any B grade stuff. Uh, and that's that's the really hard part. Beyond that, I think it kind of comes back to, you know, eminence is eminence and does their own thing. And BNC Speakers is the expert at doing BNC Speakers business. And we have lots of really, really great long-term customers that let us be that way. You know, it's a two-way street. Um, and so I, I don't want to say that eminence is going to do anything in particular because they have their own, uh, you know, the way I think also, I've been at BNC Speakers for so long that I'm, I'm, it's in my head. And so if I say, hey, why don't we do it this way? I, I could be wrong for eminence's customers. And I want to make sure that I don't do that. So it's kind of funny that you say that because I, I've had a chance to use both BNC and Eminence drivers. And BNC, my, so my two favorite compression drivers, I should say, uh, BNC DE250-8. Hmm. For I, I think that's a great driver, especially for the price performance ratio. I think that's a fantastic driver, especially for DIYers like myself. And then what my absolute favorite, that's that's second on the list, sorry. My absolute favorite is the Eminence Techstream compression driver, which yeah. I really love. Um, so I, I don't know, uh, you know, that's one that I just really love. And so AJC is wondering now that you guys have bought them, are you guys, are BNC going to be using any of that tech stream compression driver technology in any of your products? Mm, that is a little, uh, maybe too much inside baseball. Uh, oh, no, we can't talk about that. AJC. How dare you? Yeah. You know, it's funny because, well, hmm. Let's let's say we're working on some other diaphragm technologies, and uh, that's that's our focus for the next couple of years in BNC. We've been testing, um, you know, obviously we're testing materials all the time. We've also tested magnesium and carbon fiber, um, and you know the fact that we haven't come out with a Techstream dome or other carbon fiber dome in the last couple of years, um, I think that's due to just more the the type of customer we have that. Um, needs a sonic character closer to what they've been using and that sort of lends mm -hmm. them to lean on titanium and the second they change then you sort of have to change the whole model lineup so we certainly have some customers that are moving to a different material but then they they do it for the whole next lineup of, of products mm. um so yeah we've we've looked at it i don't i don't i frankly don't know uh what the what the plan is for that but uh also now you can just buy it from us through eminence so what's the what's by that the point one? All right, so I actually got this asked on uh, Patreon because I told them that I was doing this, and so it's not on this list, but <laughs> I almost feel guilty asking this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So before this merger happened, we were at Parts Express uh, Midwest Audio Fest. It's not even called Midwest Audio Fest. I was just so used to calling it that. They call it the Speaker yeah. Design Competition. Talking to the Eminence guys there, Jerry McNutt in particular, and he's like, oh, man, I'm going to send you – some drivers to do a build with. And I was like, oh, great. So he's like, I'm going to send you a text stream. He already sent me a text stream. We already did a build with the text stream. But he's like, I'm going to send you another text stream, another horn, and a 12-inch woofer. He said, I'm going to send you those so that we can make a center channel speaker. And then I said, well, if we're going to make it like that, we should also advertise this not only a center channel speaker, but also a rear surround, because I think that's the perfect size for a home theater rear surround. And then over the past couple of weeks, it kind of got pushed off, pushed off, pushed off, pushed off. I didn't ask Jerry about this, but I'm assuming it got pushed off because of the merger. Yeah, they've, they've been a little bit, <laughs> they've been a little bit busy. Uh, I, I can't speak yeah. for what Jerry's been up to, but I know that the uh, the top management at Eminence, and certainly we've been just absolutely slammed. It was a uh, anytime you you do an acquisition, it's uh, it's an incredible, incredible amount of work. Now, fortunately, I didn't do almost any of the work on this one, so uh, I can I can thank some other people, but uh, that, that was a lot of work. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So the question is, do you think that's still going to happen or not? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, let me know how I can help. I'd, I'd be happy to, to back Jerry up on that one for sure. Okay. Um, I didn't ask Jerry that question, by the way, because I figured he had enough to be worried with. I was like, well, I'll ask Bennett. Bennett's on. I'll ask him. He has no skin in the game right now with it. So who knows? <laughs>
I mean, I love giving away speakers when they get used interestingly. So, well, I mean, as long as it does a good job promoting the brand, I mean, that's the whole thing is, you know, can you give them a project that someone's interested in building yeah. uh, the right because... person, the right project. And then, yeah, let's make it happen. Right. That's that's why I was so impressed with what Keith did. I love that he used his uh, laser, his CO2 laser, did all that awesome engraving on the back and everything. It was just a really neat project. By the way, guys, if you haven't seen that, you got to check that out. Uh, Chiari, you guys you guys put some pictures out actually on the Chiari page, I believe, on the Facebook page. Oh, yeah. and, on the North America page, yeah. Yep, North America's Chiari page. So you guys, you should check that out. Um, I know, oh, man, I know I did not share any. I'm bad. I didn't share any. I didn't. But I, I talked to you guys about it like multiple times. So I should have shared some, but I didn't share any pictures. All right. So what should we expect from Eminence in the next year? Oh, boy. You know, we just bought this place. So uh, also, I am not in charge. So <laughs> I'm 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 here in Miami at a, a motorcycle and car show. Uh, but uh, Jeff, Jeff uh, asked me to jump in and, and say at least a few things to, to correct some misconceptions, but I am not in charge of uh, eminence. Uh, don't have a title there. Um, and uh, certainly while I talk to the people who are going to be in charge, there's a lot of work to do sort of on the ground floor and uh, getting, uh, you know, greasing the skids and, and getting them as, as well situated as possible before we make any strategic decisions there. But um, there's certainly a lot there uh, that I think will happen Maybe not in the next year. It's a lot of work to do. So what, be, behind the scenes, me and Bennett talked a little bit for like a minute because Bennett got on right before we started. And one of the things that Bennett had said, uh, if you don't mind me saying, you'd said something to the extent of, you know, one of the things that Eminence does really good is with their guitar speaker line, bass speaker yeah. lines, things of that nature. And that's something that you are excited about, at least with the Eminence line, correct? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, you know, you look at Pro Audio and we have such a huge market share there and we've been very fortunate to be so well treated by our customers uh, that there's there's a lot of faith in both directions there. Um, but where, you know, where are we gonna grow there? It's not like we're gonna find another $10 million customer tomorrow, who could it possibly be? Uh, so to develop new business and grow the group, we need something that's not quite pro audio, but it still references our strengths. You know, I've had people come to us and say, oh, why don't you make like uh, solenoids? So solenoids sort of like a speaker. There's a moving part and a magnet and a coil. It's like, well, okay, that's cool, but it's a totally different industry. I don't mm -hmm. know anything about selling solenoids, whereas I know a lot about selling speakers and making speakers. So the trick was, what can we do that lets us leverage all of our expertise and our manufacturing uh, that, that we maintain in now three countries? Um, and uh, and still, you know, and branch out a little bit. That's that's not really pro audio. And so the guitar, the bass speaker, that sort of stuff is a really great way to do that. Now, BNC is located in Italy. Yep. Yeah, the, the headquarters are just outside Florence. Chiari has its manufacturing on the east coast of Italy in Senegalia, uh, and 18 Sound is north in Reggio Emilia, sort of near Bologna. Is that Sorry. Italy as well? Then. Yeah, it's all Italy. Oh, so so this is the first time acquiring anything outside of Italy as far as headquarters is for. Yep. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't realize both 18 Sound and I, I'm actually not real familiar with 18 Sound. I've never used any of their drivers, never used any of their stuff. Um, honestly, now, I've never seen any in, in person, actually. Um, but they're not. Are they big in the U.S. market? Because I'm not familiar if they are. Yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're another large OEM brand, uh, as we are. I think that they have uh, less commercial success in the sort of DIY market. Yeah, sure. We've been we've been lucky to have. Uh, and hopefully that's something we can change. Yeah, I will say that's one of the things that I, I've always been impressed with BNC is that you make your drivers available. So one of the things that people have been wanting for a long time in the DIY world, uh, if you take a look at, for example, um, JTR speakers. One of the things yeah. that they use really, really well is they, they make a compact horn, <laughs> a good enough horn, compact, but they use a compression coaxial driver. And up until, what was it, like two, two, three years ago, um, there was only one company providing them. I think part of that was due to their, they had some type of patent on the technology, right? Was it? JTR? Um, no, not JTR, uh, who they source them from. I can't, uh, the company's a uh, BMS. Hmm. Did they have a patent or am I wrong on that? Uh, I mean, BMS has a sort of 
famous combatant that is supposedly on ring radiators in general, but uh, it's it's really on the specific shape of the phase plug in one of their ring radiators, gotcha. and not on ring radiators in general. So, so one of the things that we I was always excited about with you guys is that you guys came out with a compression coaxial as well, which looks like a regular compression. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, I don't have a compression driver right next to me, but usually I do. I got a send you um, one, yeah. Uh, that usually has the compression coaxial on it, but on the back, instead of having one set of terminals, it has two because the diaphragm is also is a mid range and a tweeter in one as far as it has the high frequency and the mid frequency, and they can go down to what three to five hundred hertz or something in that range. Yeah, it depends on which one we made too. The first one was the DCX four six four, which is a four inch mid and a, a two and a half inch high, and that one's been very successful. But it's sort of the I mean, I guess we could make a bigger one, but it's it's sort of the be-all, end-all. Um, and the trick there is getting the two band passes to join together and behave well, because the wavelengths are, you know, mm. pinky width. Um, and there's a lot of resonances that can happen in the chamber. So we have a patent on the method we use to do that. Uh, and then we came out more recently with the DCX354, which is smaller. It's a three-inch mid and a two-inch high. And that one's actually even more difficult to do because the mid goes higher and so the, the wavelengths are even smaller um and so we have a patent on the shape of the mid diaphragm as well to get the high frequency extension we needed out of it but the wow. idea is that you can have this sort of perfect point source with the advantages of a multi-way system which are you know splitting the load across two band passes and, and having uh for instance a high band pass that still sounds really good up at 18 20 kilohertz whereas a big four inch compression driver that might try and get that same level of output tends to be pretty trashy up there yeah, the the only thing that I I can say for sure, and one of the reasons why I've never even considered doing a a compression coaxial build yet, well, at least with a BNC, is that horn is huge. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it depends on how low you needed to go. The thing with the, yeah. you know, the biggest horn we made up until this point was the ME90, which loads to about 800. So to go an octave lower, if you want to maintain about the same pattern, and I, I like the pattern on the MU90, I think it sounds really good off axis. Then you need to be twice as big in every dimension, which, you know, twice as wide, twice as high, twice as deep. And that's a big, big damn horn. And there was only yeah. one other company making it because um, Celestian made a really beautiful fiberglass horn, but it's oh, yeah. fragile. And so it's it's uh, not as easy to ship and to put into to pro or semi-pro projects. So uh, we, we made that horn to really if you want to get extract the most out of the DCX series, that's a really great horn to do it. But that's only if you really want to go down to three or four hundred hertz. Yeah, and I'm not sure, man. I the information is escaping me, but I know JTR also uses a horn. I wonder how good that horn is because it's not nearly as big. And I don't know where they cross it over at. I think it's like six hundred, so they might be. Yeah, you know, there's also be... a big difference. There's an advantage in using that coaxial technology because the mid, just because it can go to three hundred. If you don't go to 300, uh, you can get a ton of output and and still have that advantage. You know, a, a three inch compression driver at 600 is really going to be pushed, but at 600, this D6354 is just barely cranking over, and so it's perfectly happy. So you get the sound quality and the low distortion from the the driver not working hard, um, and you're you're almost an octave lower than a normal compression driver can still comfortably do. Yeah, but that's what I always found interesting because one of the hardest things in home theater, right? And it, and it actually interests me in commercial theater too. And so I'm going to throw this out there for you, a, a free tidbit. And you probably already know this anyway, but it always wondered, it always made me feel that way because in home theater and commercial home theater, one of the problems with like a center channel speaker, for example, uh, if you do uh, uh, like an MTM version or whatever, an MTM is good though, because it has good horizontal yeah. and vertical off axis if you can cross over low enough. And so I always wondered, you know, JTR's done a really good job, I feel like, with using that compression coaxial crossing over low with some major big woofers where they get a really wide and vertical off axis. And it makes me think like that could be a really great um, product for that type of environment. Yeah, I don't know if you saw the 215 DCX suggested design that we put on the BNC website. But it's a that big horn and a pair of 15 inch subwoofers actually the 15 sw 100 i think uh and it's a big cabinet because i wanted to there's clever stuff you can do putting the woofers behind the horn but then you need to really have a cnc and i wanted it to be something that people can do on a table saw but it, it oh. is that it's a big mtm 
designed to be nice and smooth off axis in both both axes and have good vertical coverage to keep all the, the shit off the ceiling. Um, and it, it's really I, fun to listen to. It's really fun to listen to. And that's what JT is going for as well, I assume. Yeah, actually, I, I think there's actually does. So there, there it is right there, right? Yeah, it's massive. That's we did actually all the pretty cool. Of it and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a big box, but I wanted no subwoofer. So I think it goes to like 35 and it's, it's a point source with a capital P. I, I saw some images of you starting to build that. I'm pretty sure it was Jeff that shared some on, on Facebook, although it could have been someone else. Maybe it was on your BNC group page. I'm not sure. I can't remember. It was a while ago, but I saw you saw when you were kind of like working on it and you hadn't figured out, I don't think the orientation of the woofers yet and stuff. Cause you were messing with that, but it was, it was pretty interesting. And, um, I might be wrong as well. Cause you look at, you're looking at me like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to second guess you. You could be right. I don't remember. I don't know. All right. So here we go. Notorious RVH says it, people have been saying this and I, by all means, I have no idea even what this is, but can we get an old image dynamic style compression driver for automotive use? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that is. RVH, this is you're going to have Yeah, this is why I have Jeff. He's my automotive audio expert. I'm not, I'm not that guy. I'm the pro guy. Well, a couple people have been seconding that. So if you want to take that into memory, that right. that's an I'll interesting thought. What the hell are these guys talking about? Yeah, what, what are they talking about? And do we have something like that? Or yeah. do we have something that would fit that? which maybe you do. We just don't know about don't it. Know. We make so many compression drivers and we're releasing a whole new family with a new patent on, on it uh, starting, I don't know, this, this fall, late fall probably. All right, here's the deal. I, I, I want to have you back on when you come out with whatever this new technology is, um, whenever this new technology comes out, be, if, you would, if you would come back on, because I want to know what this is. We have been talking so many times on this channel about technology and what goes into the speaker drivers. And uh, we've been talking about beryllium, Textream. We've been talking about titanium. And there's, right, there's there's different uses and cases for each one. Um, some you like, some you don't. Like, I'm not a huge fan of titanium myself. I know that I, based off what you said earlier, some, sometimes you get pigeonholed and stuck with that technology because of various reasons. Uh, but for me, titanium... Oftentimes, depending on the horn and depending on where you cross over, it can be a very bright sounding, uh, high breakup type speaker. It's just not my favorite. I've, I really have liked the tech stream so far. That one just sounded more, more like a, more like a dome tweeter almost. I mean, it just mm -hmm. it has just got a really soft kind of natural neutral feel that I, I really enjoyed. Um, I've never heard of beryllium, so I I can't. I can't talk on that oh, one. I got a, I got a prototype diaphragm I can send you. I mean, oh, that yeah. particular subject is one I could go on for an hour about because it's one of my one of my favorite things is to take a bunch of drivers that have different diaphragms in them and listen to them. And, and they all measure the same. They look the same. Whatever. Everything is the same. And you can pick them apart every single time. So these materials have a definite sound. Um, thank, and also thank that you. depends on it's not always it's not always the same, you know, titanium sounds a certain way when used a certain way. And there were certain mm. titanium compression drivers in the nineties that were durable and got loud, uh, but sounded horrible and had no response above eight kilohertz or so. Uh, and then there's the famous DE 900. That was the first one to really have good high frequency response as well as the durability and the sound quality. And now we have computer modeling. We can do a lot more with the material than we could do before. And frankly, compression driver technology today is computer modeling technology in a way that wolves so are not. So it's interesting that you say uh, the first part of that, which was, hey, I can take different um, diaphragms, put them in, and you'll actually hear a difference, even though they will measure the same. Because I think that, that there is this belief among most people that if we can measure, and I think that's because we're, we're coming to this um, time and age where measurements are becoming more and more prevalent. We're seeing them more and more. Uh, in the past, we really didn't see a lot of speakers measured besides just an on axis response maybe. And, and that's about it. But now we're starting to get off axis response. People are getting their own clip holes and measuring things. But yeah. it's interesting to hear you say that because I think a lot of people are under the belief that if you take a speaker, a compression driver, put a titanium or whatever, and they measure exactly the same, then they must sound the same. Yeah. I mean, also it depends on which measurement you're taking. I think I'm talking specifically about magnitude measurements that, 
Mm. That you look at the magnitude response of these, these drivers and they look exactly the same. If you take all the measurements you can possibly take, harmonic distortion and uh, intermodulation waterfalls. distortion and waterfalls, all this sort of stuff, and you put it all together, then you'll, you'll. I mean, uh, frankly, having looked at all that data, it sort of averages out and it's hard to say, well, shit, I mean, this one has like 3 dB more of this here, but not over here. And this one, you know, how do you say one's better? They just, they're different. And it all depends on the goal you're going for. And sometimes specific materials have specific advantages in some applications where it's just, this is the best material for this application. Small drivers were pretty much going to this high temperature polymer and all of them is light, takes a lot of power. Uh, it's not very expensive. Uh, titanium is really great for bigger drivers. because It's super durable. And we really understand how it's like paper cones. Why don't you use other materials? Well, paper sounds good and we really know how to work with it. It glues up well. Uh, it's got a good, you know, uh, speed of sound in the material. Um, then, you know, it's like, well, why don't you use beryllium? Isn't beryllium the best material? Well, yeah, beryllium is the best material, but who is going to pay me $600 for a three inch compression driver? Nobody is nobody on the planet. Yeah. I mean, that, that's always the issue with the beryllium, right? And that's why I, I was so excited about the tech stream based off of what Matt Markham was showing me as far as data points and things of that nature and how it kind of matched up with the beryllium in certain aspects because that's the problem with beryllium is cost, right? I mean, yeah. the, it, it gets to the point where, yeah, it maybe it's the best, maybe it's not, but it doesn't matter because you're paying such a high premium. Is it really something you're going to use? And I know in the mass DIY market, probably not going to be what they're going to be using. Yeah, I mean, beryllium is really cool. And don't forget that when beryllium was first available in like the 80s and 90s, uh, the alternative was like titanium stamped together by his job. <laughs> the alternative was titanium just stamped on a round dome with you know whatever plastic surround and so beryllium mm. was like way way better but now that we can we can figure out how to how to calculate the modes of the material and how to form a surround that's durable and provides mm. anti-rocking behavior that sort of thing there's way less of an advantage to beryllium and you know a titanium diaphragm stamped costs us like 50 cents whereas the beryllium diaphragm wow. Uh, just the diaphragm material costs more than the entire compression driver that we cost more than we sell the whole compression driver for. So it's, it's not, it's like two orders of magnitude, at least difference in, in price. Um, and that's just uh, not tenable. I was really hoping there would be something we could do with beryllium because beryllium is very, very hard to break. It turns out. Uh, mm. And I'm talking about rolled, rolled beryllium. I don't know anything about sputtered beryllium, but not but beryllium like, okay. spheres. Not beryllium spheres, yeah. It's got to escape from those tiny, sharp-toothed baby aliens. Miners, um, not miners. Miners, not miners. That's such a great movie. <laughs> it uh, is such a great movie. <laughs> but I was hoping that we could say, hey, what if we took the same compression driver and, I don't know, enhanced it so it's got even more motor and then put on this beryllium dome. And the advantage is not only is it like it's, it's like 1 or 2 dB more sensitive, but also you can put 3 dB more power into it because it doesn't break because the beryllium is so durable. And even at that point where it's like, this could be equivalent to two compression drivers in one, it turns out, uh, you know, the DCX was the way to go there. That's good to know. All right. Well, I don't want to leave you all day. I know that you're having fun out there in Miami. It's already like 630. You're probably like ready for dinner. Is there anything else you want to say about the acquisition between Eminence and BNC that we haven't touched on that we should know before we go? No, I mean, there's no, there's nothing specific yet because it just closed. Um, but I, I really wanted to dispel this, this rumor and this myth that like we would buy a company. First of all, we're not assholes, or at least I, I try not to be an asshole. <laughs> Nobody's successful 100% of the time, but we're not a capital company or some, some shark that's going to come in here and bean capital the hell out of the pro audio industry. <laughs> this is our industry. We're in yeah. it for the long haul. And if we start hurting it, then we're just hurting ourselves. And so... Uh, for me, obviously, the goal with Eminence is to have a stronger Eminence five years from today than we have today. I want to see that, too, because between us right here on the show, one of the things that I, I felt with Eminence, I, I love Eminence. I love the people that work at Eminence. Nothing wrong with them. I did feel like, at least in the DIY industry, maybe, maybe I'm only seeing it from the DIY world. Maybe you know, in the pro audio world or where they, their main issue is like, maybe it's not, I, I did, I did feel like marketing was a little lacking in the essence of what we are seeing from eminence. Like I always liked eminence. I always enjoyed them. I always enjoyed their speakers, but I, I, I never really 
heard much about him. I mean, I knew them, obviously. Everyone knows them. Yeah. You open up a, a I, I bought a pair of speakers, like secondhand speakers, open them up, and sure enough, there's eminence in there, you know. So everyone knows the name, that they have the name recognition. But my question was always like, where's like I don't see the advertisements of these, like that Tech Stream driver was so good. But it came and out such like incredible designs lately, like the the Tech Stream yeah. driver, the NSW series. They've got a uh, mm. well, I shouldn't I shouldn't uh, spill the beans on anything they're working on. That's not my place. Uh, but they, you know, they've got really great stuff there, and it's you know, these are people who love pro audio and and home audio and guitars, and they want to make everything sound better, which is that's my goal. That's what I want to do. So it, we're we're totally aligned there. Uh, mm. I will say, we as a group need to get better at marketing because I think it's easy to, to go to one of our top customers and say, Hey, you know, you know us, what do you want? Let's do this, go forward. Um, and we have a, you know, huge relationship with those people and see them all the time. And then you get down to people who just want to build a loudspeaker and they're like, well, you know, what have you done lately? It's like, Oh shit, man, we spend so much money on technology. I can't even tell you. Uh, but we're just not advertising it as well as we, as well as you should. So one of my goals, uh, not specifically for eminence, but definitely for eminence is going to be to to work more on advertising to make it clear what we've been working on. We are a technology company for all Absolutely. the brands, and we're working on on new stuff every day to try and make next year's sound better than this year. I w- I will say this. So I saw. Oh, thank you so much, DIY Hi Fi. I appreciate it, man, for the super chat. One of the things that I, I when that first extreme driver came out, I was like, man, that looks so cool. But then I saw the price on it, and it's not crazy expensive, but it was expensive enough. I think it was like three hundred and fifty dollars right now, or something in that range. Yeah, I don't know. What it is was it like, relative to the the normal compression driver? Uh, well, it's, it's significant. It's like twenty five percent more, I think. Mm, I'm not sure. You know, it, yeah. it depends on which which one we're. Cost, so just... It depends what we're talking about. Like entry level compression drivers are starting around a hundred bucks. So you know, so it's yeah. like three and a half times that. So then you you get yourself saying, well why is it you know that much and now you start seeing other companies that came out with this technology like radian and stuff like that which are twice as much as the eminence mm-hmm. right like they're seven eight hundred bucks and two years ago when i was looking at that i didn't understand why is it this much more you know like it would have been so nice to be able to have a quick advertisement that said look this is why this cost me. or I, I i had matt markham come on the show a couple months ago uh, now who actually explained it to me. And then all of a sudden I was like, this is why, and this makes a lot of sense. And honestly, when you look at it from, you know, the aspect of performance, like it's a great value. It's, yeah. it's not expensive. It's actually like really good deal. Well, it's and that's, hard, you know, to sort of figure out what, what's the perfect application for this and what's special about it. Um, mm. And uh, that, that's certainly the case of that sort of thing where it's like, oh, okay, so it's a three inch and it, but it's more expensive, but now you've heard it. And you're like, oh, well, this does something that very, very few compression drivers can do at any price that had that level of output. And that's what's special about it. But until you hear it, and it, it's amazing how we come all this way and we have all this computer modeling and measurement and whatever. And we have experts with PhDs on our staff who does it, do this all day, every day. Um, and still at the end of the day, it comes down to what does it sound like? And there is, there is so much truth to that. And I keep saying that to people. I wish, I wish you would do it. And here's the deal. Here's where I, here's where I see that eminence tech stream driver. This is me personally. I see it being used in a hi-fi style speaker, similar to that of the Klipsch Cornwall, mm-hmm. um, of a high end uh, range where someone would, uh, because I heard that and I, I'm, I'm like, this is like, you get the high efficiency but you get the sound quality that you're looking for out of a, a normal dart. So you push it with just about anything you want. You want to use that class A, B tube amplifier or class A yeah. tube amplifier. Go right ahead, man. You can push that all day long with it. Um, it and you can easily pair it with a 15 inch. You can cross it over low enough um, with a 15 inch woofer, to get you down to 30, 35 Hertz or so. I mean, it, and with high efficiency and in a relatively small size, you know, depending on what you consider relative, but um, yeah, to me, like that's, that's where that shines. And I, I'm going to try to do something with those eminence drivers later this year in something like that, because I feel like that's really where that particular driver would really shine. Yeah. 
most. Yeah, in it, my it was opinion. on them where, where there's just no other or the other choices may be, you know, it costs four times more. I mean, try try and buy a tad compression driver. Yeah, they sound great. That's cool, but don't you know breathe on it too hard or else you're <laughs> gonna be paying a lot of money or you may not even be able to get the replacement part. So it's nice to have a driver where okay, it sounds really great and it's doing stuff that I can't do with other compression drivers, but also I can buy replacement parts anytime. All right, I'm going to ask you one last question, and I'm going to let you go, because AJC has been really doing a lot in this show, so I want to ask it for him. He said, hey, I want to use the BNC 14 NDL 88 with the Eminence Texture and Compression Driver um, with a Hypex Fusion plate amp. What, what is the BNC 14 NDL 88, and do you like that driver? Oh, of course. It's the best driver on the planet. Uh, no. <laughs> is that because it's BNC? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Everything we make is the best driver on the planet. No, the, okay. the Fortune DL88 is uh, it's a, it's a, it's one of my favorites actually because the ratio of the um, the cone size, so it's coupling to the air and the motor on that woofer is extremely good. Uh, it's sort of a the NDL series is a lightweight line array sort of speaker designed that you know you're gonna put in the air, so it needs to be lightweight, but also it's for line array, so it needs to go low and uh, you know it needs to do it all. Um, sort of the Swiss Army speaker for us. And uh, the um, we don't make a coaxial of exactly that because the the fourteen CXN eighty eight is a it's integrated so it's one it's more like we took a really big compression driver and bolted a woofer to it than that we bolted a woofer to a compression driver the other way around um, and so it is not technically impossible to do that but I don't think that our primary goal is going to be making mashups of products in our respective catalogs. Um, but I do like to hear that sort of stuff. So, you know, if you got a if you got a crazy idea, do send it to me because I, I love crazy ideas. Uh, and I don't I don't wanna not do something fun just because uh, it's a little weird. Oh yeah. And that uses glass fiber. The former does. It's, yeah, it's a glass fiber former, and then the cone I think is also loaded with glass fiber. Is it really? So not a paper cone. I mean, all of our cones are paper, but they're all loaded with something. Well, okay, yeah, that you're right. Okay, I, so because yeah, usually when I think of paper, I think of like a just like a normal pulp versus like a bamboo pulp or glass fiber or something of that nature. But I, I understand what you're saying, and that makes sense. Um, I really enjoy glass fiber for some reason. I've only heard it on like two different drivers, but every time I've I've really enjoyed. It. I heard it on Wavecore first. Mm -hmm. really big fan of them on Wavecore. And then I heard it the second time, and I think it was actually a Dayton Audio. All right, one last question. We're going to let you go. Last question is, when are you guys buying Dayton Audio? <laughs> <laughs> if we buy any other company, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go insane. No, I don't think, you know, I think people look at this as like, oh, BNC just wants to own all the companies. That's not at all true. Uh, uh, it's, that, it's that we want to have, a presence in every part of the market and eminence got us that if we bought dayton audio we just have the same thing again and you know honestly those guys are doing an awesome job the design team over at dayton uh in, in getting those transducers out and picking the right products for the marketplace i have huge respect for them uh and uh that's uh that's that's something that i i would like to do more of well bennett i really appreciate you coming on uh this is actually the first time i've met you face face so i really appreciate that too really easy to talk to and i am excited to see what you guys do uh, in the future with the eminence brand and like i said we'd love to have you back on when you get that new technology out yeah for sure it'd be a pleasure my email is on the website or it's be press at bcspeakers.com and i like talking about loudspeakers so anytime man all right excellent all right guys we are out we'll see you later